Manchester United have never been short of rivals. Whether it's the battles with Leeds United on and off the pitch, the title races against Wenger's Arsenal, or the non-stop tussles with our noisy neighbours. But there's one rivalry that burns brighter than any other for us Reds, and that's that one with that lot from down the M62, Liverpool. Beating Liverpool can not just make or break your weekend, in some cases, it can even make or break your season. Losing to them can be the worst feeling in the world and make you question everything about being a United fan. That badge, the shirt you put on, it should mean something. Blood and thunder, passion, sweat, tears. They gave nothing today, nothing. Beating them can be the sweetest feeling ever. Finish! Go on. Back to Finish! Space. Finish! Finish! Yes! 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 So why do we all eight Scousers clap your hands? What is it that makes the two sets of fans truly despise each other? Why can't we all just get along? It is a historic rivalry and it's not just football. Liverpool and Manchester have been competing for years with things like economy, jobs and trade. This goes all the way back to the Industrial Revolution where Manchester and Liverpool were two of the biggest cities in the country, establishing themselves as some of the world leaders for textiles, shipping and manufacturing. And if that rivalry wasn't big enough already, the creation of the Manchester Ship Canal was certain to tip things over the edge. All of a sudden, Manchester could bypass Liverpool and access the sea directly, which meant they were challenging Liverpool's credentials as one of the biggest port cities in the UK. And then add to that the fact that Manchester United and Liverpool have been the two biggest clubs in English football for almost 100 years. You have got yourselves a rivalry like no other. Centuries old feuds over money is one thing, but once you started throwing football into the mix, the rivalry took on a whole new meaning. It is, it's the biggest game in English football. They have been the two most su successful football clubs. You know, a game against Manchester United, you just dread and lose them because Old Trafford's a horrible place to go and get beaten. And unfortunately, I've experienced it. It's the biggest game in English football, bar none. Um, it's a fierce rivalry. It's the two most successful clubs in England. It's two cities with um, historical, cultural differences. It's um, it's always a spicy atmosphere. It's the big one, yeah. When did it start for you, John? This this rivalry was it something like as a kid you're just aware of it? Because when I was a kid, you were I grew up in the eighties when I was little, and when I was like first started going to the game with my dad. I was aware that Liverpool were sort of winning titles and, you know, they, they were the team to beat. And then we had the Fergie era. Was it something that you just sort of knew as soon as you started becoming a Liverpool fan? It's like United are the team that we ate. My first memories of, of football are, are the late 80s. I was born in 82 and so I started to be conscious of it. Late 80s, uh, uh, my first game I went to was 1990 and, uh, and we won the league that season the first time I, I was you know, go into in, in the ground and the United weren't really anywhere, but there was still this real sort of animosity towards them. You know, you get our fella saying, oh, you know, they, even when they were in the second division, they were on the back pages of the papers and stuff like that. There was this idea that, you know, Manchester United were the media darlings and were the, you know, the, you know, the, the one everyone sort of, you know, wants to give all the attention to and stuff like that. And, and there's probably still a lot of that sort of going on. And I'm sure Liverpool have had that backwards, you know, the idea of, oh, you know, I think Ferguson used to moan that it was always Liverpool players on the telly, <laughs> Liverpool players and stuff. So we probably had a little bit back, but it is funny, like Manchester United felt like the big one. And I remember thinking, these games are different. This is, and there was a, there was a few good ones in those early years when I first started going. There was, uh, I think we won two 0 and you guys were over the title with Leeds, and it felt like the Liverpool had denied you. And then the free all, I remember being a really good game. And from quite an early age, like early teens, it was like Manchester United is the biggest game of the season. Man United is the one that you want to go to, and Man United is certainly the one that's going to have the biggest edge in the air. And the fact that you would only get more and more successful, and it's funny actually because we played City at the weekend. And this is sort of a good example of where that rivalry is. Straight after the game, and it was one all, and I was sort of walking out, and this City fan, I don't know if he turned the wrong way, but he's walking past the cop in a Man City shirt, Man City scarf, and just sort of walking down. And I remember seeing him thinking, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't get a Man United fan doing that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, and and I, was, I walked past him, and no, no one was chance. bothering him. And listen, that, that's good. That's a good thing. There's been a United fan, like, 
I mean, there would have been a few comments at least, you know what I mean? And a, and a few people who would have had plenty to say. And so I think that sort of sums it up, really. Both clubs have had periods of dominance. United in the 50s and 60s under Sir Matt Busby, Liverpool in the 70s and 80s, before a certain Sir Alex Ferguson knocks them off their perch. Bully enough, it's an FA Cup game on Sunday. My single worst day as a Liverpool fan was in 1999 when we left 1-0 for the whole game and then you guys came back and won 2-1 in, in, in stoppage time. And even worse, I think you had quite a good season that year as well, went on to uh, win, win, win one or two trophies, which obviously made it even worse. But you know what it's like, because when you, especially when you scored early and you were leading all game and then like, and then, and then, because yeah, so, the, the, the stadium, you know, it's, it, I mean, it's a massive stadium, isn't it? What is it, 70,000? It feels like 170,000 when you're crowded and all celebrating round and you're sort of surrounded because the way the away, way, it's a horrible place to lose. It's the worst place in, in, to go and, and, and not win. And, and like I say, because for my life, you have been so successful, you know, I, I just, there hasn't been that many where, we, where we've won. And so there's all that. So there's the extra edge around it, there's the extra tension around it, and all just contributes to. Yeah, it is a massive game of football, and, and yeah, if you get beat, it's the worst feeling. But if you if you can go there and win, and I've been to a few of those as well, that there's nothing like that either. But has Jurgen Klopp got Liverpool back on top? If it wasn't for Manchester City, Liverpool would probably have a few more titles. Some claim that this is the greatest Premier League rivalry ever. I mean, Carragher's statement that Liverpool Manchester City over the last six years is the greatest rivalry is offensive. But really. One title doesn't make Jurgen Klopp part of the greatest anything. But a successful season in his swan song could change all that. It's up to United to make sure any talk of a quadruple is just that talk. Bring it on.